Lord, as we spend some few moments hearing you speaking to us from your word, Lord, I pray that you will minister to our needs and that we'll leave this place knowing that there is comfort near the cross of Jesus Christ. For we pray in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Today we are continuing with our second series of uh, the pharaohs of our time. And we are on part two. As we celebrate uh, in, on this month of the black history in this country, we are reminded of the painful history of people of color who were forced to come to this part of the world against their own will and against their own conscience. They were robbed of their names, robbed of their language, robbed of their identity, and were subjected to slavery. As we celebrate in this month of February in this country, it is befitting that we remind ourselves as a community of believers of three facts. Number one, it is wrong and it is sinful and it is evil to treat another human being as less human. Just because of age difference or because of gender or because of social status or because of a place of origin. It is wrong and sinful to emotionally, socially, mentally, physically, and spiritually inflict pain to another human being. Number two, God will not tolerate any human instrumentality, any individual, or any systems or institutions that thrive on suppressing and oppressing other human beings. God will not sit and keep quiet and pretend as if all is well. Because human beings belong to God. Number three, if those forces of evil refuse to listen to God's command to let his people go free so that they may save and worship him, God will make it. God will make it. And they will let them go, but at their own peril and devastation. It is important for us to know that God does not start a fight. But you know what? He finishes it. It is also important or worthy to note that God fights the battles of his children not just for fun or to show his muscles or to show his power. He fights our battles so that we can be free to save him and to worship him. 
God wants us to worship him freely and to serve him wholeheartedly as our Lord and as our King. I want to suggest, brothers and sisters, that whatever battle that you are going through in your life, it could be from fellow human beings or it could be from your own body, from your sickness, or from the society or the communi community. I just want to say that God will set you free for a reason. And the reason is that you worship him and save him. In part two, we find in part one of the pharaohs of our time series, we discovered that during the reign of the pharaoh who knew Joseph and the God of Joseph, both the nation of Israel and Egypt succeeded because that pharaoh was a dreamer. He was inclusive. He was a visionary leader and he saw potential in others, not stumbling blocks. You and I will succeed in all spheres of life when we see others as assets in the building of God's kingdom. Tell your neighbor, I'm an asset in the building of God's kingdom. I may fail, I may not be perfect, but I'm here because I am an asset of God in the building of God's kingdom. God has no rejects. If God has fought your battles, it's because he has a place for you. And he wants you to participate in worshiping him and in saving him. In part two, we find the Pharaoh who had nothing to do with Joseph and the God of Joseph. For the Bible says in Exodus chapter 1 verse 8 to 10, then a new king to whom Joseph meant nothing came to power in Egypt. Verse 9, the Bible says, look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become far too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them or they will become even more numerous, and if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. Brothers and sisters, if they fought against you and won, why would they leave the country? It's just paranoia. Liar. The only reason is that he did not know the God of the Israelites. He was just afraid. See, pharaohs would not know God. They are afraid of their subjects. This is what we learn from the pharaoh who had nothing to do with Joseph and his God. Number one. He did not know Joseph and the God of Joseph. I want to remind all of us here today. That in life, we need to know that not all pharaohs who come to the positions of leadership truly know the God of Joseph. There are some pharaohs who are sent to the throne not because they fully understand the history of the nation they lead, but because they are politically connected and they just happen to have been born in the royal courts of Egypt. In whatever position we hold, brothers and sisters, we need to be in a relationship with the God of the people we lead. Amen? 
We need to be in a relationship with God so that we can treat God's people well. Pharaoh was not in a relationship. And so those that he led, he did not receive them or expect them as his people because he did not believe in the God that they believed in. When we know Jesus, we will know and do his will. We will know and love his children unconditionally. It's not about them. It's about us. Amen? It's not about them. It's about us. Number two. The Pharaoh did not know Joseph. He was afraid and paranoid of the people he was leading. In life, we want to have many friends. Is that not so? We want to belong to a big church. Is that not so? We want to belong to a big family. Is that not so? We want to belong to a big and powerful tribe. Isn't it? We want to belong to a strong and powerful community because there is support and there is strength in numbers. My son, Samu, is working on an app called the Nest Brain. And each time when thousands of people open his app, he gets really excited. We love to have a big following, isn't it? Because when we have people following us, we know that we could be doing the right thing. Because this Pharaoh, who did not care about God of Joseph, he perceived his followers as a threat. I want to suggest to parents here, and those that are hearing um, through uh, virtual means, I want to suggest to teachers and leaders of communities, Parents and teachers and leaders whose roots are not deeply grounded in the God of Joseph will be afraid of those under their influence. When you see students, if you are a teacher. When you see members in the community, if you are a community leader, gathered together. When you see employees and children gathered in small groups, you think they are talking about you. You are afraid of the people that you lead. I'm reminded of a time when I was working as a foster care social worker. I had this supervisor who felt like every worker was there to undermine her. As a result, she would come to the office at night and open the drawers of every employee hoping to find any piece of evidence to support her distorted thoughts. And she would be more angry and frustrated when she couldn't find any evidence. That's how the pharaohs who do not know your God behave. We need to liberate ourselves, not by witch hunting, but by developing a relationship with Jesus Christ. The Pharaoh did not know Joseph became oppressive and dealt shrewdly with the innocent, helpless Israelites. Like all of us, we respond to fear but either fight or flee. Fight or flight. <laughs> Thank you. Unfortunately, those who are in leadership would rather fight than run away. Because he was afraid of the Israelites, he chose to fight them. 
by oppressing and dealing shrewdly with them. What he did not know was that by waging war with the weak and helpless Israelites, he was declaring war with who? With God. Brothers and sisters, we should never, never temper with the weak. We should never take an advantage of those who are weak and helpless. Otherwise, our calling as individuals, our calling as leaders, our calling as Christians is to protect the helpless, to defend the weak, to empower those who have no power, to be a voice of the voiceless. Never start war with God because he's going to finish it. Tell the devil, devil, don't start a fight with me because my God is going to finish it. Devil, don't start a fight with me because my God is going to finish it. Never make God's child cry because God hears the language of tears and he will show up for them. Those who have opportunity to lead, those who have people under their influence, treat your subordinates, treat your spouses, treat your old aged parents well. Because if not, God will show up for them. And that could be ugly. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 to 10, Then the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. Brothers and sisters, God sees your misery. God sees what you are going through. When nobody else is watching, when nobody else is listening, when nobody else is there, God is there. God sees what you are going through. Even when your children do not know, even when your spouse cannot find out, God is there when you are crying alone. He says, I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I'm concerned about their suffering. God hears your cry and he is concerned about your pain and your suffering. You know, there are some experiences, brothers and sisters, that we cannot even share with our own children, those who have children. There are some experiences that we cannot even share with our parents, those who still have their parents. Where we feel like nobody will understand. Nobody will be able to help. But God hears your cry. And he's going to do something. It's just a question of when. He's going to come up and respond to your cries. God hears your cry and is concerned about your pain and suffering. And verse 9, the Bible says, and now the cry of the Israelites has reached me. When you cry, even when you cry in Rialto, or you cry in San Bernardino, or you cry in Rancho, you know what? God, your cry reaches heaven. Amen? Even when you cry right here, when you cry in your bedroom, when you cry in your bathroom, when you cry in your closet, your cries reaches heaven. God has no distance. God has no geographical limitations. God is everywhere. He is present. He says he, has, he, he, is, he will never leave us or forsake us. He says, their cry has reached me and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, 
I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. God did show up for his people and told Pharaoh to back off. God will show up for you. God will show up for your family. God will show up for his church. When the church of God cries, when your family cries, when you cry, God will show up. Then the Lord said to Moses, go into Pharaoh and tell him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may save me. That's the reason. God does show up, show up in our situation so that we can have an opportunity to save him and to worship him. Let my people go that they may save me. To whatever situation that makes you cry in the closet, in your bedroom, in the doctor's office, in the therapist's office. Whatever situation that makes you cry. Whatever situation that is holding you into captivity and robbing you of peace and happiness. It could be abusive relationship. It could be sickness. It could be COVID. It could be diabetes. It could be cancer. It could be death. It could be sin. Whatever situation, brothers and sisters, God will show up. The Lord God of the Hebrews is saying, let my people go that they may save me. It's not a suggestion but a command. God is commanding sickness in the name of Jesus. He is commanding poverty in the name of Jesus. He is commanding all the powers and principalities of this world in the name of Jesus to leave you alone so that you can worship him. You just have to be at the right place. Your heart has to be at the right place in order to benefit the victories of God. You know what? If the forces of evil refuses to let you go, you know what? God is going to make it. Hello? God is going to do what? He's going to make it. The Bible says it really got ugly when God showed up for his people. You, you talk of being ugly, ugly, it really became ugly. You know what? Water turned into blood. Frogs started jumping everywhere. Lice, pandemic. Fleas, Flies on every dish. God showed up. Livestock pestilence. Boils all over from head to toe. When God showed up, there was hail. Locusts came in. Darkness covered the country. And the dying of the firstborn children when God showed up. God will show up for you. God will show up for you. Just be at the right place. I want to know that God will deliver us from the pharaohs who do not know our God. I love the lyrics of the song of faith and hope that was sung by slaves of old. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. We are not afraid today. 
or deep in our heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. The truth will make us free someday. The Lord will see us through someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. We shall all be free someday. I do believe we shall overcome someday. I pray that this will be our song as well when we face the pharaohs of our time. We shall overcome someday. Last but not least, when we overcome, we should always remember that God saves us for his service. Some of us, we want to enjoy the saving, the blessings of God so that we can benefit ourselves. We need to understand that God saves us for his service. The children of Israel forgot about that after 40 years of their experience. When God shows up for us, then we must go and save him. The joy of God's salvation is experienced in worship and in saving him. God heals us from sickness. God heals us from brokenness. God heals us from addiction. God saves us from our enemies. And that healing is only temporal if it will not lead us to worship and saving God. Brothers and sisters, allow me to suggest that we are saved for service, not for self-aggrandizement. We are comforted to comfort others. We are healed to heal others. We are blessed to bless others. We are forgiven to forgive others. We are loved to love the unlovable. In 2022, I want to worship God in spirit and in truth. How about you? I want to serve God wholeheartedly. How about you? I want to surrender my life to God. How about you? As we come to the end of this service, I would like to extend this invitation to all of us here and those that are with us online to take this moment of consecrating ourselves to the God of Joseph. Let's do so by raising our hands wherever we are or by standing up with our feet if, you know, if we're able to stand as we consecrate ourselves and surrender ourselves to the God, to the God of Joseph to your God and to my God. Jesus, keep me near the cross. They have prayed, just found him. Free to all a healing stream of flows from cow. Oh yes, in the cross, oh in the cross, be my glory till my ransom soul shall find O oh, rest beyond the only the cross, a trembling soul, 
love and mercy far me they the bright and morning star share his beams oh yeah the cross Oh, till my rain just so rest. I want to assure brothers and sisters that there is rest for the weary. Are you tired of this world? Are you tired of persecution? Are you tired of sickness? Are you tired of being exploited every day? Are you tired of being sidelined? Sometimes you feel you are nobody when you are somebody. I just want to say, my brother and my sister, there is rest in Jesus Christ. There is rest for you. And God is saving you so that you can worship him and save him. Oh yes, need the cross, O Lamb of God, bring his sins before me. Help me walk from day to day we is shall oh yes in the cross oh yes be my glory oh heal my red just so shall find rest 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 on the cross i watch and wait hoping trusting ever until i reach that golden strand just beyond just beyond just beyond the river may we remember that jesus will fight for you jesus will fight for you and you will get the rest for your soul in sickness in poverty in deprivation god has a rest for your soul Eternal Lord, we are tired of the pharaohs of this world who do not know our God. The pharaohs who rob us daily of our joy and our peace and happiness. The pharaohs who treat us as enemies, as rejects, as stumbling blocks. The pharaohs who are afraid of our successes, the pharaohs who are afraid of our dreams, the pharaohs who do not mind and care about our God. Lord, I pray that your church may find rest in you. Just as you delivered the children of Israel, Lord, may you deliver someone here under the sound of my voice. Someone is sick here and the doctors have failed to give a right diagnosis. Someone is worried here, is looking for a job. Lord, answer to that prayer. Somebody here is looking for a companion. Lord, answer to that prayer. 
Somebody here, Lord, is lonely. Lord, give him comfort. Somebody here is crying. Lord, wipe away his tears and her tears. Somebody here is about to give up his faith and her faith. Lord, revive his faith and her faith. Lord, may you give someone assurance that there is hope in Jesus Christ. There is life in Jesus Christ. There is salvation in Jesus Christ. There is eternity in Jesus Christ. Minister to us as we leave this place. For we have prayed in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. God bless you and happy Sabbath. Thank you for joining our worship service. If you like our content, please click the like button and consider subscribing. You can also check our other videos on our YouTube channel. Please feel free to visit our church. The address is in the description below. We hope to see you there. Bye.